People often say that the biggest obstacle on the spiritual path is dealing with other people who are asleep. But it shouldn't be a problem because even people on the spiritual path have the wrong mindset for dealing with other people. I will explain to you a state of being that one must be in when dealing with the world. In my 15 years of teaching Eastern philosophy and spirituality, the one thing that I often hear is how it is an obstacle to deal with others and the world around them. Now, as I said in the intro, this doesn't have to be a problem, but we often magnify it and think it's a huge problem. And particularly if we're in a working environment or particularly with our families, we come across a lot of resistance, particularly when we are beginning on the spiritual path. Some of you who have probably walked down the road a fair way probably don't have the concerns, particularly as a beginner. But I often do get a lot of older people who will still complain that it is difficult to deal with their family and other people in general. And look, I sympathize with that and I don't disagree with what you're saying. But I think that we need to look at it in a different way. We shouldn't look at others in an undermining way. The fact of the matter is, is that a lot of people haven't come across the knowledge that you've been blessed to come across, right? It's a great blessing to come across the great spiritual traditions of the East particularly and practices and knowledge that show us what the ultimate reality of existence is. It's like what Swami Vivekananda said, it's kind of an open secret, right? Atman is Brahman is kind of this open secret. When you first hear it, you go, of course, but it was always there. It's like this open secret that's always there. And so they just haven't been exposed to this open secret. And that can be many things, right? Life situations, circumstances, and so forth and so on. And as we know with the Eastern spiritual traditions, they aren't missionary focused. So it's not up to us to go around and hand out pamphlets and copies of the Ashtavraka Gita to everyone and say, hey, look, this is the ultimate reality. Don't worry about this or that. That's not for us. On the spiritual path, you're constantly abiding in the Atman and you're, you're operating from that place so that you can deal with the world in an immediate and appropriate manner for what is needed in that situation, right? But the problem is, is when we still have remnants of the jiva left, when we come across other people who are completely ignorant of the ultimate knowledge or ignorant of just life itself, it can be hard for people to deal with. And so you really have to remember, who is it the one that is suffering in this situation. It's the jiva, it's the ego, it's a persona system that makes you suffer when you deal with people who aren't aware of the ultimate knowledge and who are, we could say, asleep and ignorant of a lot of things in the world around them. But going around getting angry about how asleep someone is or if your family are asleep or this and that is the wrong attitude. As I said, I sympathize with that because no one should actually treat you badly because you've made a decision to follow the spiritual path. And I think that that onus goes on to the, uh, particularly a family when they are treating their child or husband or wife like that. And so that is not good conduct, obviously. But what I'm speaking about here is how you on the spiritual path can deal with people who are asleep, maybe even your family, right? Because from the ultimate Atman, when you abide in that, you're not really angry in these situations. You can actually engage in their story because this is a great act of compassion. Most people, when you talk to them, they're telling you their story or their version of reality. And when people go further on the spiritual path, this can be exhausting for a lot of people. And we've all been there, right? But sometimes if you just bend a little and just realize that it's just their story, this is a great act of compassion. So then we become better listeners, right? We can listen to someone's story. And okay, there can be those sort of toxic people who just can't shut up and it can be hard to listen to them forever. But you can at least listen to them for a little bit, right? I mean, you don't have to stay there for half an hour, an hour, and just listen to them regurgitate their problems and their story. But you can at least at the beginning have the heart to just listen and keep an open mind about what they're saying. And so 
This is what a great act of compassion is. It's not to close yourself off from what people are saying or from the world itself. You can listen, but it doesn't mean you have an opinion on it either way. You don't have anything to add. And we've all probably noticed when we don't have much things to add, a lot of those people who we quote unquote say are asleep often don't gravitate back towards us because we don't have anything to offer really. So they know that you won't engage in their story time. And look, that's all you're doing, right? You're only engaging in other people's story time, their stories, their problems, everything else. But when you go further on the spiritual path, as I said, when you go deeper and deeper and deeper into this knowledge and you start to see reality from that ultimate perspective, then you can have great compassion and listen to others. You can be like that wise grandma that you probably had, right, who would listen to you and would be very tender and caring for all people. And that's what a wise sage becomes. They become just like an old wise grandmother. They have an open heart and open mind, but they don't engage in the drama. That's the difference. They have the compassion to listen, right? And that's why they don't suffer when they are dealing with others. While for the rest of us, when we see others who are completely asleep and who are completely ignorant of the world, our jiva starts to rise up. And you can feel the energy condense in your head, that anger and that frustration and the astonishment that that person is completely ignorant of the world around them and themselves, right? But that's not for us to resolve for them, right? Our situation is to resolve for ourselves. Why am I getting angry about this situation? Why do I even care that they don't even know the ultimate knowledge or they don't know this certain situation? Why do I care? Do they need to know? And of course they don't. So as I said, it's just a great act of compassion to engage in their own story time. Obviously, there is a limit to that. But this ultimately has nothing to do with them and more about you on the spiritual path. And nothing is like a dagger to the heart of the jiva than just listening without reacting to what is going on around you. This is part of vairagya. You know, a lot of people say vairagya is just dispassion to worldliness and et cetera, but it's also non-reactiveness. And that non-reactiveness, as I said, is like a dagger to the heart of the jiva. And this is how you suffocate the jiva day by day, piece by piece, because you're not allowing it to get frustrated and entangled with the stories of others and the worldly dramas around you. And as you continue to do that, it starts to disappear and then the radiant sun of Brahman, the Atman, begins to shine through you, which allows you to see the world in its one true state as the ultimate Brahman. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti.